In this video, we're going to have a quick look at comparing the alkanes and the alkenes and summarizing that into this table here. So the first thing about alkanes is that their names all end in ane or ane. As you can see below it here, we've got alkane and ethane. Okay, so their names all end in ane. There we've got a diagram, which is called the displayed formula of ethane with its, with its molecular formula there, C2H6. And we can see that every carbon atom has four bonds around it. And all of those bonds are what we call single bonds. So single covalent bonds between the carbon atoms, which is what another thing that indicates that it's an alkane. Now, Coming on to that, the single covalent bond between the carbon atoms, which is shown here, and that relates to this bond there between the two carbon atoms. If there's only one line between the carbon atoms, we call it a single bond, and we say it is an alkane. These are also called carbon-carbon single bonds. It's not a typo. The carbon-carbon just refers to between two carbon atoms. The single bond between the carbon atoms, we use to also call it a saturated molecule. So the saturated molecule, again, is related to single covalent bonds. So if there are only single bonds, one line, one bond in between the carbon atoms, it's a saturated molecule. Alkanes also all have this general formula of CN. H2N plus 2. Now what that means is N is the number of carbons and if we use ethane at the top here there are two carbon atoms so N is 2 and if for to work out the number of H's we times that by 2 so 2 times 2 is 4 and then add 2 which gives us the H6. So another example of that would be if we had C3, double that, times it by two, which is six, and then add two, we would have eight hydrogens. Another key thing to note is that they do not react with bromine water. Now, bromine water is an orange color. Because no reaction happens between the alkane and the bromine water, the bromine water just stays orange. Another important thing here is that they burn with a clean flame, which then makes them very useful as fuels. We don't get lots of thick smoke coming off them. And the last thing there is they undergo what is called substitution reactions. So in order to react with anything, then what has to happen is one of the hydrogens or two of the hydrogens or more of them have to be substituted for other elements such as bromine or chlorine. Okay, on to the alkenes. Now in the alkenes, we can see again, just like previously, their names all end in E-N-E, -E, and that gives us the example of ethene there. As you see, ethene has two carbon atoms, ethane also has two carbon atoms. Eth means two carbon atoms, okay? We can also see that the alkene has this double covalent bond, which looks like an equal sign between two carbon atoms. So because of that, we call that the double covalent bond or a carbon-carbon double bond. Now to be an alkene, there only needs to be one double bond between the carbon atoms. So if there are four, five or six carbon atoms in the molecule, then there only needs to be one double bond for it to be considered to be an alkene. They don't all have to be double bonds. Because of this double bond, we call it an unsaturated molecule. So the double covalent bond between two carbon atoms results in it being called an unsaturated molecule or an unsaturated hydrocarbon. They have the general formula CnH2n. So just like before, where n equals the number of carbon atoms. So in, in the example of ethene, C2, so N is 2, and then H2N 
means that all we do is multiply 2 by 2 to get h4. Okay. Again, if we had another example, if we use three carbon atoms again, so C3, that means that N is 3, 2N, 2 times the 3 is 6. So it would be C3H6 for this example. Now, alkenes do react with bromine water. Okay, so they do react with bromine water and they turn bromine water from orange to colourless. So it's a great way, a really fast, simple way to find out if we've got an alkane or an alkene. Add bromine water to it. If it goes from orange to colourless, it's an alkene. If it stays orange, then it's an alkane. Now, alkenes burn with a smoky flame. So thick smoke tends to come off an alkene. Which means, them, which means that they're not very useful as fuels because we don't always want this thick smoke coming off everything that we burn. They are, however, very useful for making something called polymers, which we commonly know as plastics. Um, you'll learn more about that as you go through the topic. And then they also undergo addition reactions. That means that the double bond in the middle here can break and it means it can accept or other atoms can be added on, such as chlorines, bromines, other hydrogens, etc., etc. Well, hopefully that's been a useful summary of alkanes and alkenes for you and should help you with your project work.